We created the squad six years ago thanks to Mr. Rupert's donation and funding. Uh, it was something that we believe had been missing from South African golf. You know, we've produced great players over the years on the world stage, everyone knows that. But perhaps we'd have produced more if we'd had a squad system which most of the other countries had. Because that's where you can tick boxes that you can't necessarily, you know, it's the expertise that you can provide over and above the amazing structures that South African golf's always had. You've always had clubs that, you know, help us with the juniors and encourage junior player competition. Golf unions that um, run competitions, there's a lot of volunteers involved in that. So the structures have always been good. The thing that was missing was, was having a squad environment where you can give them that little bit extra. You can take them to international tournaments as a team, as a squad, and expose them to that and expose them to, to various experts like we've had um, over the past few days here uh, at the National Junior Development Centre. First of all, a big thanks to Golf RSA for letting us boys come here. I mean, this is probably one of the best practice facilities in the world and I'm, I'm looking to achieve I'm um, just an improvement in my game throughout the week. Um, we've got the, one of the best ranges. We've got an absolute masterclass of short game area. I'd really like to try and learn from as many people as I can because we've really got experts in every field that we can have here. So for me, it's really about keeping my mind open and, and really trying to listen as best as I can. And taking a new leaf out the book within, in terms of information especially because there's four different coaches here and looking at something from, a, from their perspective as, as a coach in terms of golf, I guess it just helps because now it clears, clears your mind for better opportunities. Everything that Golf RSA and Mr. Rupert has done for us, for us, for us to be here, it's, um, it's unbelievable and it's a great place to work on your game and you just get better and we all really appreciate it. A few years ago, Mr. Rupert built the National Junior Development Centre, which is on the you know, sort of on the borders of, of um, Leopard Creek, and it's the most incredible facility. We also are allowed access to Leopard Creek in terms of taking the, the youngsters onto a, a world-class championship golf course, um, where they can test their skills, and we have kind of experts that, that follow them around. And the facility itself, the driving range and uh, the par three course, there isn't anything missing in terms of what you need to practice. Every time I come back to Leopard Creek, I'm like, it's, it's really tough to get better than this. So we're very fortunate where we've got a 360 degree range, where we've got upslope downhill shots, we've got fairway bunkers, we've got, we've, we've got everything. We've got the par three course, we've got the main course that side. Every shot you can think of, use your imagination, you can hit ya. You can hit out of the bunkers, anything you want, any type of shot. And then you can go and play the par three course, that's amazing. The holes there, like my favourite one, like everyone's favourite one is TPC 17. The green looks so small and it's so exciting just to play there. You know, it's an amazing place. I think if you practice here and your golf don't improve, then you don't practice well enough. Um, everything is just amazing. The driving range, the putting, the chipping area, it's just it's so good. To think about it, pros have been here. I mean, the, the Alfred Dunhill as well. I mean, it's just like, it's such a great facility and I mean being here for a week, I don't know, it's just lovely. The speakers were chosen in order to, you know, Jacques Callas from a perspective of how how he applied himself, how he prepared. He spoke a lot about being grateful, you know, having having manners, being humble. The expertise that they can bring from an outside perspective, but are, which can be applied to golf, how they handle pressure. Um, was amazing. Guy like Jacques Retifi spoke around management companies. He's been involved in management companies for over 20 years and what you should expect from a company and what happens when you're signing a deal with a management company and what to look out for. Um, Leonard Loxton, who, um, you know, from Titleist is a, a sponsor that's been with us for a long time, but what's fantastic about Leonard, he understands which players make it, the ones that are dedicated and why the ones that don't make it, don't make it. So he speaks about dedication, what he's learned. So that brings another dynamic that's very interesting interesting for them to talk to. And then Louis Hutting from Supersport in terms of how you engage with media. Um, the fact that not only should you be doing interviews but being aware of the fact that you're actually part of a production here. So in a tournament where are the cameras? How do you engage with the cameras? Because that's how you engage with the public. And once again it goes back to you as a brand. 
So the, the, the speakers we've had here this week you know, gave up their time to come and, and talk and share with us their, their knowledge. It's, it's just absolutely fantastic and I can tell you that the youngsters have really enjoyed it and have taken a lot away from that. Go out there, be the best man you can be, play the best golf. And again, I, I can't emphasize enough that, um, you know, make wise decisions. Because you're in a position now where you need to make decisions. You need to decide how long you're going to stay an amateur for. You need to make a decision on where you're going with your equipment, where you're going with your life. And uh, never forget, <laughs> I don't know, it's such a cliche, but never forget to smell the roses. The whole emphasis has been since day one was to, to build a, a winning culture. And, and not only a winning culture, but, but also a culture that we can be proud of as, as Golf RSA. And, and everything that we do in terms of bringing in the specialists that, that, that we brought in this, this week and, and people like Jacques Cullis and Jacques Retief and, and, and specialists in their field that came to speak to us. And the, the whole emphasis is on, on building a culture where, where people can be world class and, and, and creating a, a structure and an environment where uh, we can leverage off knowledge that, that is purely South African, uh, but, is, but is world class. In its, in its own right and, and learning from those people and then trying to improve the players not only in terms of how they can, can hit the ball and get the ball in the hole but, but all aspects of, of how they are as people, uh, how they live their lives uh, and, and hopefully get them onto a level where, where they, can, they can all be successful what, whatever career path they, they choose. So um, in, in summary I think it, it's very much a, trying to create a, a world class culture um, on, on all different spheres that, that, they, that they might be involved in going, going into the future. We would like to uh, sort of widen our net with the amateur scene. You know, we don't spend enough time as, as we are a partner of the Sunshine Tour and all our, all our time and energy is focused on that mainly. But what, uh, what Golf RSA is doing here is giving us peace of mind that, you know, that they, there's enough growth and there's enough good players coming through. I mean, this being the cream of the crop is just imp special to work with. The camp's been great. I, I think it's been really nice to have the golf coaches out here, you know, being able to interact with them. And I, I think having all the support staff and the guest speakers and, and seeing how invested everyone else is like around the squad. You know, if nothing else, they should feel like they've got a team of people behind them that want the best for them, that uh, want them to uh, achieve what they're capable of achieving. So it's, it's been really encouraging to see all of that and be part of that. Um, I've been very fortunate to be part of the squad since essentially it started. So, you know, to have a, a small role to play in that's been really great. From our point of view, it's been fantastic. First of all, to catch up with other coaches, so share knowledge has been terrific. So I think that, um, you know, that adds to the, the camp. You know, and to listen to the advice that the, that's been handed out from different perspectives and, and it gives them a great insight as to what actually happens out on tour. And I hope they take everything they can from these camps because that's what it's all about. For me, something that's really important when it comes to practice is we all have weaknesses. And we want to work so hard on our weaknesses. And we spend hours and hours and hours on our weaknesses. And yes, we have to do that. But then we forget to spend the time on our strengths. And our strength then becomes less of a strength because we're working so much time, we're putting so much time into our weaknesses. Work on your weaknesses, but don't forget to spend the time on whatever your strengths are as well. So if your strength stays a strength, and your weakness that you're trying to improve closes the gap between those two. So that for me is a real key point. You got a, a legend of the game of cricket um, right in front of you, so that's just like an honour to be here and just see him and then to hear him speak this morning. I mean, what a speaker he is, like just how much detail um, he said to us. I mean, we just took in a lot. I, took, I know personally I took in a lot. It's fantastic to be in a place like this, also with people like this. We're very lucky to have some great speakers and obviously the staff who we're used to having around, but we still have to be very grateful for what they do for us. So to have everyone in one place and at a place like this is just, it's absolutely amazing. Obviously everyone wants to be world number one. I mean, that's what you dream of when you start playing and, you know, even if you're just on the practice screen and holding a putt to win a major, but definitely to, to get on the PJ Tour and you know, to win and seeing guys from the golfers, say, squad be, going there on the PJ Tour and now it's, it's crazy to see because we can also do that and hopefully one day we can. I want to be the best golfer in the world, win major championships, as many as I can and then just give back to those people who have helped me get as far as I do in the future because I know myself personally I would, I would have never got opportunities that I've had without for instance, Mr. Rupert and the Golf RSA squad. So you got to keep all those opportunities in mind for the, for the younger generation. So we keep on doing what we've been doing over the last couple of years because 
South African golf, if it's this strong now, it's only going to get better in future if the process and principles are still right within the guys from now and they can make it self-sufficient in the long run.